Good morning and welcome to this Easter service live from St. James on behalf of the Regional Ministry of Grenville North. It is such a pleasure to have you here this morning to celebrate this glorious day. Alleluia, the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Indeed. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord is 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 risen indeed. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. 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 May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. 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 Our hearts with joy. Yeah. May, May he, he fill, fill our, our hearts, hearts with joy. joy. May he fill our hearts with 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 joy. May you fill Gosh, I wish you could be here this morning. The smell of the Easter lilies is filling the church, and the altar is adorned with flowers. The brass is sparkling. It is a beautiful morning to celebrate. I invite you to join with me as we say the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his, and we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His faithfulness endures from age to age. We'll have the readings from Scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to te testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. 
I will not die but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. According to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she went over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. 
When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuna, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father. And my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this glorious day when the tomb was found empty, your son alive. We pray, Lord, that your holy scripture would sink deep into our hearts, into all the places, Lord, where we need to hear about resurrection. Lord, that you would be with us now here in this place and in each individual home, that your spirit would be drawing us into the mystery of the empty tomb. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What is in a name? A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Juliet ponders the crux of her romantic relationship her last name and Romeo's last name are incompatible. Now, of course, it's not their last names that are incompatible. It's not their, the letters or the syllables or the sounds of their last names. It is rather the history that is attached and defined by their names. Their names are inhabited by their family history. Names are given substance of course, by an individual's life. Names carry with them the meaning of the person who has lived into them. For Christians, names are very important because we believe that each person in this world is created uniquely by God and loved by him. At baptism, a Christian is named, their full name is given, because we believe when a child or an adult is brought into the family of God, they are brought into the family in their personhood. A name is critically important as a way to identify who we are. Sure, there's lots of Dougs and Roberts and Susans in the world, but there's only one Susan who was born on May the 18th, 1945, to the mother of Elsa and the father of George. Names are one way that we signify our personhood, who we really are, what our history is, what we like, what we've done, our character, our activities. For Christians, our personhood is critical. Christians believe something very different about life after death. We believe that death does not remove our personhood. In other words, at death we don't kind of melt into some abyss. We don't, uh, we don't dissolve into the universal nothingness. Christians believe that in life and in death, our personhood continues. That we are indeed eternal beings. And our name signifies part of our personhood. It helps to identify who we are and how we are loved. Now, why does all that matter? Who cares about a name and whether it identifies my personhood or not? It's because of what happens in the gospel this morning. The gospel, we find uh, the tomb 
with Jesus laying there. Mary Magdalene gets up at an hour I like to call the Charlotte hour. That's uh, 6 a.m. in the morning when my one-year-old likes to wake up uh, so that we can see the sunrise, not just on Easter, but on every day. And so Mary goes to the tomb early in the morning, and it's dark. She's going there to weep, and when she arrives, she discovers to her surprise that the stone has been removed. Mary immediately runs back to tell the disciples. The disciples then run to the tomb. They go inside. They discover the body is not there. The disciples then run away. And Mary stays. And Mary weeps. For Mary, this is insult to injury. Not only has her Lord been crucified, pierced with a spear, laid dead, laid in a tomb, but now someone has come, or a group of people have come, rolled away the stone, and stolen his body. So she weeps. Mary encounters two angels, but it says nothing about her reaction, as if she's kind of unaware that they're angels. They say to her, why are you weeping? And she says, they've taken my Lord's body. And then, something happens. When Mary is overcome with this despair, despair that her Lord has been killed, buried, and now his body even has been taken. She is overwhelmed with despair. Have you ever been overwhelmed with despair? You felt alone? Felt isolated? But then there is a voice. There's someone outside the tomb. And the voice asks, what what are you doing? And she says, where's the body? Do you know where it is? Uh, Tell me where it is so I can go get it. Mary's envisioning here that she's going to go and get the body and drag it back and place it in the tomb. She's so upset, she's not thinking clearly. And then that man, who you and I know, speaks to her with one word. He says to her, Mary. And that one word is like a defibrillator to Mary's chest, and suddenly she is jolted into the reality that Jesus Christ is no longer dead. His body has not been taken from the grave. Jesus Christ is alive, and he is risen. He is risen. And now, Mary's heartbeat has changed. Now her heart palpates, palpitates with the, with, the, with the sound of he is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. These are the words that the church has been speaking for centuries, and it continues to beat this drum. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Come war, famine, peg, pestilence. Jesus Christ is risen, and the church will refuse to stop speaking the message of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is risen, my friends, and today we celebrate his triumph over everything, everything that speaks death, everything that speaks destruction. He is risen. Jesus calls Mary by name. But he also calls someone else who is very important by name, signifying that he knows everything about them. And that person is you. Jesus Christ calls your name. He knows you. He knows everything about you. And he calls you home back to himself, to hope, to joy, to healing, to transformation. Perhaps you have been a Christian a very long time, and perhaps you have never taken seriously the promises of Jesus Christ. This day, Easter day, is the perfect day to either affirm your faith or begin your faith for the first time. 
Today is the day to give your life to Jesus Christ. Today is the day to say yes to his resurrection, to say yes to hope, to joy, to healing, to transformation. So I invite you, we're going to use the words, the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. If you've been a Christian for a long time and you desire to reaffirm your faith this Easter morning, I invite you to say these words with me. And if you have never made Jesus your King, your Lord, your Savior, I invite you to say these words for the first time and invite him into your life. Do you affirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Will you strive to safeguard the integrity of God's creation and respect and sustain and renew the life of the earth? I will with God's help. God the creator, rock of our salvation, you have given us new birth by the water and by the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. May he keep us faithful in our calling now and forever. Amen. And I invite you to join with me as we pray. At the end of each prayer, I'll, invite you to res I'll say, let us pray to the Lord, and I invite you to respond. Hear us, Lord of glory. Let us pray. Father, we just bless you and we thank you this morning that your Son is alive. He is alive. The tomb is empty. We pray that our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That isolated and persecuted churches around the world may find fresh strength in the Easter Gospel. We remember particularly the Holy Land for Jerusalem and all the places where people are persecuted for their faith in Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray 
to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that he may, through us, provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that by his powers, war, famine, and disease may cease through all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, to the weak, to those who are dying, and all who tend to their needs in this difficult time. that they may be comforted and strengthened. We thank you for sending your prayer requests in. We pray particularly today for Nigel, Avalon, and Hal, for Jean, Verna, and Grenville, for Gary, Colby, and Sandra, for Scarlett, George, and Indy, for Brian, Kathy, and Gerald, for Edith, Sean and Cindy, for Natalie, Hattie, and Richard, for Elsie, Lois, and Miriam, for Trinda and Diego, for Martha, for Jim, Ken and Linda, for Connie, for Rilla, Doug, Mitchell, Kylie, Lucas, Anita, Steve, Angie, Julie, Andrea, Cindy, Karen, Joan, Sarah, Kristen, Connie, Linda, Dave, Michael, Donnelly, Rodney, Douglas, Leslie, Sarah, Bruce, Pat, and Erica. And I invite you, either aloud or in the silence of your hearts, to invite those who are in need of your prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that he may send the fire of his Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may bear fruitful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Lord of life and power, through the mighty resurrection of your Son, you have overcome the power of sin and death and have made all things new in him. May we, being dead to sin, and alive to Jesus Christ, reign with him in glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit is alive, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, thank you for joining us for this Easter service. I pray that the joy and hope of the empty tomb the empty cross, the risen Christ, will fill your hearts to overflowing this morning and continue with you through this season. The blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you now and with you always. Amen. Thanks. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Thanks be to God.
to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be 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 to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Try again. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.